Hi there, thanks for tuning in to Album Rebrews. Please note, we do drink while recording this podcast, and if you choose to drink along at home, we encourage you to do so responsibly. Enjoy the episode. Cheers. Hey everybody, welcome to Album Rebrews, the newest podcast on this corner of the internet. Uh, this week, I am the fish in the percolator. My name is Logan. Don't shake the bag. My name is Sarah. My fish died this year <laughs> in real life. My name is Zach. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> oh, did, your, did your fish have a name? Yeah, his name was Marco or Polo. There was two fish. There, one was named Marco and one was named Polo, but I don't know which one died. <laughs> oh, well, so they, I mean, they both kind of did. I mean, both of them are dead now, so I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, no. Well, on that note, welcome to the new year and welcome to the new face of Album Rebrews. We're a fish uh, memorial <laughs> podcast now. And I want to take a minute to tell you guys about a fish I had when I was a kid. My younger brother and I both had betta fish. Um, but if you recall from childhood, betta fish aren't supposed to be in the same tank together. Yeah, they're very aggressive. Yeah, they fight. So I had a red one because red was my favorite color. And I probably named him like Flamey or something like that. And my younger brother had a blue one because blue is his favorite color. And we put like a metal divider that they sold at Petco in. Uh, in their tank together and they would just like swim through it and beat the hell out of each other. <laughs> oh no. <God. laughs> uh, so uh that's how that's how we're starting this podcast. Wait, you had a you had a red fish that you did not name Magikarp? Oh, I mean I could have done that, but I I think shiny Magikarp are gold and they're only red when they evolve into Gyarados. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. I feel you though. Yeah. I, I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> uh, we, I think we do a music podcast, or at least last year we used to. We used to. This uh, is season 2.5. Season 2.5, where the intro music changes, and there's like a new uh, intro credit scene. And, and there's three <laughs> new hosts. <laughs> and we also have a new host. <laughs> hey. Nice to meet you. My name is Gail. It's so nice to be here on this Fish Memorial podcast. Gail, thank you for joining us and sharing your 75 years of wisdom. I had a fish once. Oh, yeah? His name was Landrin. What, what happened to Landrin? He was like my son. Yeah. I loved him so dearly. And one day he decided to jump out of the tank and end it all. Gail, oh, is this no. before or after suffrage? During. <laughs> I was a champion for women's rights. I think we're in suffrage right now, right? Gail, you can in take the woman's suffrage. Off. We're, we're more I mean, than six I can feet vote. Apart. I think you can take your mask Hey, guys, off. Sarah here. Gail is in the other room. If you haven't put two and two together from the title of this episode and all of our fish related references today we are talking about the album guppy by charlie bliss we're very excited i got to pick this one and when i was trying to think of a beverage i was originally thinking because they're uh from brooklyn they're from new york that we should Get some kind of uh, Brooklyn beer, New York beer, hey, um, fucking drinking gabagool. Me, uh, but yeah. <laughs> as it turns out, um, Chicago is a beer loving city, and it's really hard to get beer that isn't from Chicago uh, in Chicago. So instead, I went with a fish pun, and we are drinking Dogfish Heads Sea Quench Ale, um, which is kind of like a Goza style sour ale with lime, lime juice. Lime peel, black limes, mm, and sea salt. No it's kind of like a. It's kind of like, well. Okay, look at look at me. I have a, a Wikipedia article pulled up because I was looking Hello, at the can. Limes. Yeah, because I had no idea <laughs> what a black lime was. Um, turns out it's just like a dried, preserved, fermented lime, Ooh. and it adds a fun little bit of funk. That sounds yeah, cool. I want to add that to my bar cart. I know it looks delicious. Um, and it is delicious. I've already had one. But, Log, we both have a fresh beer in front of us. you want to crack it open on air? Uh, yeah, let me finish this one first. Oh, yeah, go for it. Okay. Give me a couple minutes because 
I'm not the drinker I used to be. And <laughs> this is really sour. It hurts when it goes down. <laughs> I'll tell you about my beer. I decided to pair because I couldn't find the one we were supposed to. This is uh, not your father's root beer. Um, <laughs> okay. And I picked it because I had so many IPAs last night. I need something kind of kind of nice and sweet. Ah, true. Yeah, yeah as yeah. as of the recording of this, today is the first day of the new year. Uh, and I just wanted to say, hopefully it's better than last year. Yeah, fuck. Do you guys, uh, do you have any resolutions for this year? I have a proposed resolution for the pod. Do you want to hear it? Sure. Yeah. How about a resolution for the podcast is to start it? Oh, I, that's a good idea. I think we should do that. Let's start it. Okay, so the album I picked was the 2017 release from Charlie Bliss. It was their first full-length album called Guppy. And famously, well, you know, as famous as um, like a DIY punk band is, uh, their, it was their first full-length release and they oh. recorded it back in like 2016. Ended up scrapping the entire thing and re-recording it because they felt like it wasn't fun enough. It didn't have any like life in it and they were kind of having an identity crisis uh and i'm glad that the album turned out the way it did because it is so fun it's so sparkly it's so like there's just such a great juxtaposition between the uh front person mm -hmm. ava hendrix hendrix yeah ava hendrix her vocals paired with like these grungy ass like guitar riffs is really delicious it's so fun it's really, yeah, like 90s, like Veruca Salt, yeah. no doubt, sort of reminiscent. Yeah. Yeah. Logan, I know you really liked this album. When did you first start listening to it? I feel like you showed me Percolator or something off of it a while ago. Yeah. Like a, uh, one of the, I don't know what singles, if any, were on this album. Uh -huh. um, but you showed me like some of the choice hits. And uh, I, I like, have a big Spotify playlist where I just put all of my like songs in and occasionally I would just shuffle like a Charlie Bliss song would pop up and I think eventually I was like you know I just have to listen to the rest of this record because it's really fun and it is really fun it is nice what about you Zach what uh what was your uh, experience I listened to it yesterday for the, the first album? time I enjoyed it it's poppy it's fun it's catchy I feel like Westermark, was that a single? Like, do I know it, that song from somewhere? I don't think so. I don't think it was a single. Mm. I think they did. There's a couple songs on here that were just very familiar. Yeah, yeah. And and I've finally put my finger on it. If if you're in Chicago and you like female-fronted punk rock, uh, check out the band <laughs> Calico Plaid. Because I was like, oh, this is why I sound so familiar. This sounds just like Calico Plaid. <laughs> Friends of the pod, Calico Plaid. Our buddies. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I think uh, I I think this style of music is sort of I don't know if it's getting a resurgence or if it's its own thing now, but like the sort of like Riot Girl movement seems to have uh, been revitalized by bands that sort of sound like this. And yeah. I don't know if Charlie Bliss would like recognize themselves as people who are a part of that movement, but they certainly sound like bands that are like of that ilk. Oh, totally. Like when I was trying to pick an album, I was between this and uh, Diet Sigs, Swear I'm Good at This. And I think they're kind of two sides mm -hmm. of the same coin, like very bouncy, um, kind of pop punk, female fronted music. So the album starts off with the first song called Percolator. It's so fun. It comes in slamming. I'm going to play just a touch just to like get the vibes. I I feel like I don't I don't want to say that a lot of the appeal of this band is the lead singer's timbre, but it's super unique, and I think it makes listening to a band that would like at first glance might just sound like other bands m more interesting to listen to. Yeah, totally. I think she also has like kind of a promiscuity to a lot of her like lyricism and a lot of her singing that is also very fun feels very flirty i mean there's a lot of themes on this album about like relationships and casual dating and like boy troubles um 
But I think like, especially as like a woman listening to this kind of music, um, it, it's fun to have someone who's kind of like, not messy, but like unapologetic in her lyricism. I was kind of thrown off by her voice to go to Logan's point. Like it took me like halfway through the record before I was like vibing with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's certainly very like distinct. I was reading um, one of the reviews for the album where they called it like its own. I mean, the voice is an instrument, but like hers is an especially prominent and like unique instrument. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Yeah, I I feel like it ties together with the instrumentation really well. Yeah. Like it's a, I don't know, it, if you have a voice that sounds really unique and you find a musical style that like melds with it really well, I I think that's cool. Yeah, it is. And that's kind of their like shtick too, is I think Charlie Bliss is a band that's so much about like having fun and mm. like playing with, um, with their music or with their videos or whatever. So to, to really like drive home. Yeah, a lot, a lot of energy. Yeah, a lot of energy. I, uh, I, I will say that this album takes like a darker turn towards the second half. Um, and I think, yeah, like it, it is really fun at the offset, but it gets a little bit, uh, I don't know, more introspective and maybe a little bit, I don't know, like self-abrasive as it mm-hmm. goes on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a couple tracks and they all sound so happy and poppy, but when you go to like, genius.com and look at the lyrics you're like oh oh gosh Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i yeah i have that problem a lot where like i just won't internalize lyrics until i go back and read them so if a song sounds oh hell yeah dude (laughs) i just cracked my can cheers cheers um if a yeah if a song like outwardly sounds really bright and upbeat i will totally like misinterpret lyrics because i think the general mood of the song like is more prominent. Just like a. F- all right. Well, if we're all doing it, I'll get one too. <laughs> I'm just trying to record a podcast. I don't know if it's you guys. <laughs> trying to drink more beers. Ooh, that was crisp. What was I saying? I feel like we got off to a weird start here because we're we're all still like coming back to life from the end of 2020. Yeah, I think we all have a little bit of like holiday hangover. Yeah, I like, have a little bit. It's like jet lag. Like I, I love the two of you endlessly, endlessly. I've seen so Aww. much of the both of you in the last like week. Um, and I'm I'm kind of one of those people where it's like I know if I know I need to see someone or like in this case be funny with someone like i can't see them for 12 hours before the obligation <laughs> i yeah, i i just wait this is a serious podcast you're not allowed to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is a music podcast not a comedy <laughs> podcast every day this, this is hard hitting journalism every day sarah will be like i have a new joke for the podcast i have a new bit for the podcast i have a reminder that we're not a comedy podcast how many times do we have to tell you, Sarah? We're not a comedy podcast. Just because we all went to art school and have honorary comedy degrees doesn't mean that this is a comedy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you work two events at Columbia College Chicago, and I guarantee you both of them will feature a comedian. So how about the Harrison Red Line stop? <laughs> it smells like piss. <laughs> oh, guy asked me for money. <laughs> I'm from <laughs> fucking DeKalb. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, all of that to say, I'm I'm fried yeah. mentally, emotionally, physically a little bit. Yeah. Uh, spiritually. Do you guys want to record a podcast? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about these silly little songs. So, Zach, earlier you said something about fucking a dark. No, Logan, you just I, I pay attention to what my co-hosts say. Logan, you said something about taking a dark turn. And I want to talk about song number two called Westermark, which I don't know to what degree you two looked into the lyrics of this song, um, but it is about a bizarre situation in which um, Eva, Eva, what did I say before? I'm going to say Eva. Uh, Eva was dating someone and they ended up falling in love with their estranged second cousin and leaving her for them. Oh. So this song um, is talking about this theory where you are supposed to become desensitized to people you grow up with. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's funny that that's the title because, you know, this is his cousin. In theory, he should have um, maybe not been attracted to his cousin. 
because they grew up together. But yeah. anyway, yeah, the the song is is literally like <laughs> in the lyrics saying Can you say that again. So her ex broke yes. up with her and dated his own cousin. Yeah, he left her because oh. he fell in love with his second cousin. That sucks for two reasons. One, because he's dating his cousin. And two, because this chick wrote like a famous song about it. Yeah. <laughs> what a dunk, right? <laughs> well, Zach, you yeah. and I both grew up in the South. That's not that uncommon down there, to be honest. I don't know anyone that's dating their own cousin. You're much, you're a lot more South than I am, Log. Okay, okay. To be fair, I didn't know anybody who was dating their cousin either. Mm. But it's a cheap shot. And the South sucks, right, guys? Yeah. Oh, I totally believed you because that's just how I actually think about Al- Arkansas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not far off. You're just a fucking stone's throw away from a cousin fucker. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, hey, Sarah, what's this album called? It's called Guppy. Cool. Uh, welcome to my new thing. It's New Year. I got a new thing. It's called... Uh, I read you a little bit of the Wikipedia entries for the Billy Bass singing Wall Mounted Fish. Um, <laughs> now, my fucking God. Now, my role here as a podcast host has sort of changed over the the months and weeks and years that we've been recording the show. And uh, I think my main contribution to the show at this point is... When we take a little lull, when when we get a little down, when we're feeling like we don't quite have the the rhythm of the episode anymore, I hop in and I bring my fun new energy and my fun new brand of uh, engaging podcast enjoyment. So <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to share with you guys today uh, is a little bit of Big Mouth Billy Bass uh, on Wikipedia. And uh, the first thing that I wanted you guys to know is that uh, <laughs> there are some Christmas versions of the Big Mouth Billy Bass. It was just Christmas, so I feel like this is sort of appropriate. It's it's kind of along the lines of like leaving your tree up, but can we, I feel um, like... Can we remind our listeners what the Big Mouth Billy Bass is? Uh, the Big Mouth Billy Bass is a wall-mounted, like... Uh, uh, taxidermized like animatronic animatronic fish that sings uh classic uh hits and there's a little button on it and you press it and the the big mouth billy bass flaps around he sings his little song it's a nice treat for the whole family uh you often find them at your grandparents house at uh cabins uh fishing lodges hunting lodges mainly outdoor place it may be maybe a nature reserve they might have a big mouth billy bass um but around the holidays in case no one knows what it is can we uh can we like put a little audio in there from youtube oh (laughs) yeah sarah can you pull up a big mouth billy bass video real quick big mouth billy bass Wow, what a star. Oh, I forgot how like on Amazon. Let's see how much happy he looked. Sorry, I was just reading more of this article because there's there's a lot of the big mouth Billy Bass lore that I feel like is lost on uh, people who haven't spent some time learning about him. Um, you guys want to guess a, how expensive this collectible big mass big mouth Billy Bass is? Uh, uh, I'm gonna go sixty. a hundred dollars. Yeah, almost ninety seven ninety nine. Shit. For a sixth of your government supplied stimulus, Jack, you could own <laughs> a brand new No, for for your government stimulus check, you could own six brand new. <gasps> oh. That is a great oh. idea. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Finance Rebrews, where we <laughs> Deep dive into what you should be spending your government stimulus checks on. On today's episode, six Big Mouth Billy Bass Collector's Edition? It's more likely than you think. Hey folks, it's me, Logan, one of the hosts of the hit podcast, Album of Brews. Our lawyers want me to let you know that the hosts of Album of Brews hold no financial obligations or contracts <laughs> with the creators of the Big Mouth Billy Bass animatronic singing fish toy. <laughs> 
and there's no conflict of interest, and it's okay for the host of Alamo Bruce to advertise a big mouse singing a Billy Bass toy to you. Jesus Christ. So now that we've got our legal disclaimers out of the way, uh, tell me more about this Big Mouth friend. Yeah, so in 1999, a special holiday version of the Big Mouth Billy Bass was released. Uh, It had a Santa hat and it had sleigh bells, and he sang Twas the Night Before Christmas and Jingle Bells. Nice. There were two different versions. One sang a blues version of Twas the Night Before Christmas, and then there was a country version which sang country versions of Jingle Bells. Uh, some other versions of the Big Mouth Billy Bass include one that sings Bad to the Bone, uh, one that sings uh, I Will Survive, there's one that sings Don't Worry, Be Happy, and then in 2018, uh, Amazon released one that uh, works with Alexa. So I guess if you wanted to include the Big Mouth Billy Bass as part of your smart home, you could, and then you could ask it things like, hey, Google, play Guppy by Charlie Bliss, and then maybe the Big Mouth Billy Bass would... Sing it? That could be fucking oh, sick. That's the future right there, baby. Now, instead of bad to the bone, why wasn't it bass to the bone? Oh, well, because if you had it at like a nice little family dinner establishment, you could scratch the B off and it would say ass. Oh, you're so right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I can't have that. Anyway, that's my... That's my brief interlude to let you guys know a little bit more about uh, America's favorite singing fish icon. This is a really fishy podcast Big today. Mouth Billy Bass. Really leaning into the fish angle. <laughs> <laughs> or- I, I, I mean, I was kind of grasping at straws here. There, there weren't a whole lot of other thematic um, markings on this album. So as soon as I, I got into like the nautical nature of guppy and fish, I kind of just went with it. I like it. I like it. And I don't I don't want you guys to think that it's low effort because the holiday season has left me feeling a little bit drained. Um, but it was low effort. And you did tell me to take an hour today uh, to stop watching Attack on Titan so I could get caught up by the time uh, my friends started watching the latest season. Um, but I didn't do that. And I did watch Attack on Titan all day. So I'm coming at you with a fresh, hot... Uh, uh, this one is... Straight off the burner. Straight out the ass. Fresh dookie. Hey, Log. Are you still on the Wikipedia page? Yeah, what's up? Will you refresh and read the second to last paragraph? God damn sure, it, I'm, Zach. The whole thing? I... If you say that Big Mouth Billy Bass is a virgin, I <laughs> am going to flip my lid. Yeah, sure. So Wikipedia suggests that with your government stimulus check, you should purchase 10 motion-activated singing sensation fish. <laughs> Now, Zach, I'm curious, what is the motion activated singing sensation fish? Because that sounds like something completely different from the big mouth belly bass. Did uh did the <laughs> did the hyperlink go through? Ah, I guess the, like not. code on Wikipedia. I'm not for sure if I got it right. No, I don't know either, but my God. it does kind of blow my mind that you can edit Wikipedia in real time. <laughs> I suppose they're pretty quick on it, though. During the Haley Blay episode, it was taken down by the end of the night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want to talk more about this fishy, f- these fishy, fishy tunes? Yeah, I suppose. All right. Um, so in the theme of, like, breakup songs, relationship songs, the next song is called Glitter. And it was, like, this was, like, the single. So if this is familiar to anyone, um, it was, like, the leading single when the album was coming out. And it was a breakup song. But I think the lyrics are kind of fun. And we're all, God, I've, we've said this so many times, but the three of us are all in committed relationships. And um, originally, while this song was being written... Uh, you just want to rub that in your face. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's 2020, and we're all dating this... Er, oh, fuck, it's not even 2020. It's 2021, and 2020 we, fun. More like 2020 dumb. Sorry, guys, I can't podcast anymore. That I reached the top. I do. I can't say. podcast anymore either. I I moved a bunch of stuff around earlier today, so I'm like in day old sweat, and <laughs> I've, I've had two sour beers, and I can like feel the acid reflux starting, <laughs> and I'm just like not not physically in a place to be podcasting right now. But but we're here but and we're, we're recording. Here. But we're here, and I'm 
being a soldier. Can I, ex- All right. can I can I explain to the listeners at home what I see right now on my screen since we're yeah, recording yeah, yeah, normally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see Logan like lounging on a couch <laughs> with his mic set up so we can like mostly lay down and yeah. still be in front of the mic. <laughs> Logan, uh, reporting live from the studio, Logan is sinking deeper and deeper into the couch as time progresses. I have watched him adjust his mic stand no less than three times it's just to be lower and lower. And lower. And lower. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a fucking day. But we're professional comedians and we have an ad read <laughs> deadline. <laughs> Um, so like I was saying, we're all in long-term relationships and the song was about, um, an ex of Eva's who she realized, like, she wrote all these digs about this person, um, and was like, "Mm, this is kind of also about me. Like I was dating someone who is so similar to myself that like it made me angry at them and like resentful. Um, but I really liked the, I liked the chorus a lot and I liked, uh, a little quote that Eve had in an NPR article. Um, the course just repeats, am I the best or just the first person to say yes? Um, and she mentioned like treating people either in like platonic relationships or romantic relationships or like your fucking coworker or whatever, um, like speaking in hyperbole to them and saying like, oh, you're the best. You're my favorite. You're so, you're perfect. You're incredible. Um, and kind of, dialing back on that and realizing like that that kind of makes you seem really insincere uh should we play some of it yeah i'll play a little bit of course i think it's so catchy it's good you know what I just realized this album reminds me of a lot? Huh. Uh, okay, so kind of going back to like the Riot Girl sort of thing. Uh, did you guys watch the Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius movie? Oh my God, probably, but Is I don't the recall. the one where he switches places with Timmy Turner or no? No, 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 no. This is the one, if you recall, this kind of threw me through a loop when I learned it. But uh, the Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius film came out before the TV show did. I don't oh. know if you guys knew this. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that kind of knocked me off my rocker when I learned that. The other thing is uh, in the film, uh, there's a scene where they go to a theme park and they turn all of the rides into rockets and fly off into space to like fight this race of aliens that are flying a spaceship that looks remarkably like a chicken. Yeah, and they're like little—they're green aliens, right? I have seen this. They're like little green aliens, and uh, the, uh, that uh, where the kids in America song plays. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this album gives me uh, the energy that that scene does. Yeah. Wow. That's that's yeah, a yeah, Robuski yeah. right there. <laughs> Boy genius. Oh, that's already a band. Fuck. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Neutron blasting off in the space from our roller coaster energy. But uh yeah, I mean that's the that's the vibe I get from this album. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Very I agree like with you. like kind of teeny bopper, like yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. Should we uh do a little ad read? Yeah. Check in, chew up. Tune out. OK Drugs Peach Eatables are the perfectly calming remedy for those seeking a gentle easing of worry. OK Drugs gummies help to shift perspectives, elevate experiences, and find clarity in crazy. Peach Eatables are vegan, THC-free, made with broad-spectrum CBD to help you relax and L-theanine to help you stay focused. Order your feel-good fix and use promo code RIBRUS to get 10% off today. Uh, how many minutes into recording are we? 41. Are, oh, we, are we halfway there? Yeah. Yeah. Well. <gasps> We're halfway there. Whoa. Oh, Zach's got a bit. Hey there. Thanks for tuning in to Zach's Bits. It's a bit more of Zach than you asked for in this podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> today I want to play a guessing game with you guys um, from one of my chaotic playlist series. I'm really proud of this one. Uh, One for the name and two for how well the songs flow into each other. 
<laughs> this is my Guarillas playlist. Um, so two very different bands. Uh, Guar is like an alien metal band. <laughs> Guarillas is kind of like a like a huge fusion of genres. Um, if you don't know who Gorillaz is, you are not the target market for this podcast. <laughs> yeah, get the fuck out. <laughs> um, Gates closed. Don't come in. We are a gatekeeping podcast. <laughs> if you don't know who the Gorillas are. Uh, but I like the format of Birds and Dogs so much. I took it uh, and I'm going to use it for this mini game, which I haven't oh, named. Oh, great. Uh, and dogs. So I'm going to read to you a fact about guar or gorillas, and you guys have to tell me if it's true or false. If you get it wrong, oh. you drink. Uh-oh. So it's, okay, it's either true or false, and we're on a team. Yes. Okay. okay. All right, so number one, gorillas are a British virtual band created in 1998 by musician Damien Albarn and artist Jamie Truce. That, this is true. That is true. Also... Did you know that the uh, guy behind Gorillaz is the lead singer of Blur, the band that wrote Song 2? Really? That was yeah, number dude. six. You just God ruined damn it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just wanted you guys to know because that was the thing that also surprised me. Save your facts yeah. until the end of the all right, bit, all right, Wikipedia. All right. My bad. Sorry Pack it up. <laughs> Uh, the Gorillas animated band characters were actually a manga before the band was created. True or false? Oh, I don't think that is true. Oh, I would believe that. With, with like the art style that they are. I don't know. Question, question, master, reveal to us the truth. Uh, what? What's your guys' guess? I'll uh, go with Logan and say false. Yeah, it's super false. Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Just because Log would know more about manga than I do. Uh, the you'd be right. The Guar, uh, characters and costumes are barbaric interplanetary warriors. That I believe to be true. I'm going to go with you because I don't know a single piece of information about Guar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's super true. Yeah, they're like these big monster alien things, and they're awesome looking. Have you know, do you, Are we aware of Guar before this, Sarah? No, but now I see them. Now I see them. Please, please listen to the playlist. <laughs> Uh, Guar uses syrup and stage blood to display their audience during shows. True or false? I would say oh, that's true. true. That is actually false. Oh, dang. Um, the uh, concert by spraying their audience with fluids. Most of the fluids are made of water and color. Uh, they do not use syrup and stage blood because that would stain their costumes. One of the Guar's band members does not have a tongue. True or false? I feel like there's got to be true. That's too far out to. I it, it, I don't know. Zach's brain's kind of twisted. He's, He's like, like the, the Joker. Anti Gene Simmons. <laughs> He's like <laughs> <laughs> He's reverse Gene Simmons. His tongue actually comes out the back of his neck. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's actually so tiny you can't even see it. <laughs> um, I I don't think that it's true. Tbh. Well, we're going to have to come to consensus here, Sarah B. I don't think it's true. I All right, fine. Well, I will go with you on this one, but it's you're wrong. Yeah, it's super duper false. As far as I know, I couldn't find any yeah! information about Wait, that's their not tongues. true. Yeah. Oh, shoot. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Yeah, look who's talking now. Look who's right talking now. All right. Thanks for playing uh, Zach's bit. A bit more Zach than you asked for. Wow, Zach. What a wonderful bit. Thanks. Thank you so much for bringing that <laughs> thanks, to the table. Thanks, podcast mom and podcast dad. You're so welcome. Uh, to bring it back to Guppy, the uh, reason for the season, I would like to talk about song number six, which is called Ruby. And uh, I mainly wanted to talk about this because um, this is the only song I've ever seen that is an ode to someone's therapist. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Ruby is a therapist who... Um, Eva was seeing and helped her overcome a fear of fainting in public. And oh, I was nice. looking at an article. <laughs> I was looking at an article about this song. And like, apparently she actually showed her the song. <laughs> um, and I thought, you know, for this episode, in spirit of this song, Ruby, I'd like to dedicate the episode to my therapist, Nina. Are you going to show it to her? Uh, if I was seeing her right now, I would. <laughs> 
Would it be like out of bounds to shoot her an email with a link to the? I want to know no. if she likes our podcast. That's all. That's. Just- I would. I would be pretty comfortable with that. I've. I've cried in front of this woman many times. Um, but Nina, uh, thank you for being you. If I could write songs about you, I would. So what does she have to say about her therapist in this song, Sarah? Um, it seems like it's just generally like talking about your therapist keeping you afloat as the word that she uses and one of the lines in the chorus is she's pro i'm not that bad though <laughs> um which i think is really funny it's like she's good she handles <laughs> way more crazy people than i am <laughs> right right i'm not that bad <laughs> can we can we can we skip a couple and talk about the song dq yes that's the next one i wanted to talk about yeah DQ. Uh, it's so sad. Is it? I thought it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is. All their songs are fun. It's a fun album. Yeah, but the yeah. The lyrics are sad. That's true. That's true. A little bit. But uh, when I was reading about this song, um, it was kind of about, like the chorus at least, was about a happy memory that the band had playing a show at Stanford. Um, like oh. at a sorority at Stanford and there's like a trampoline out back and they like the whole bland, the whole bland, the whole band was like super, super drunk and playing like, you know, the game popcorn on a trampoline. Um, and Eva was the, the popcorn colonel and she got bounced super, super high in Peter pants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think, well, the first line is I laughed when your dog died. I thought that was sad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely like. There's definitely some shock value there for an opening line. Oh, but this is a this is kind of a fun theme I wanted to talk about. Um, is she talks about like <laughs> the, the last line of that first verse is, "Does he love me most now that his dog is toast?" Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's so sad. She must have hated the dog. <laughs> well. I, it was a thing. I was kind of doing a deep dive on like the theme of um, like being jealous of your partner's pet because the pet gets all this attention and all this affection and all this care from your partner. And like, I'm an adult, okay? I'm an adult. And my partner has a cat. And I know that his cat is his son and his sweet pride and joy and is is like meaningful to him and I am also meaningful to him and he can have multiple important relationships with different organisms however <laughs> yeah like the like the organisms in his gut like those are important yeah yeah the cat's an important organism absolutely Prions absolutely brain, but the control the sun. From the inside I love my partner so much but he will stop a conversation mid-sentence because his cat is giving him a funny look and he needs to leave Aww. the room and chase his cat and so I'm just I'm just sitting there twiddling my thumbs I guess while they both get it out of their systems <laughs> hey speaking of jealousy let's talk about song number 10 called Julia nice transition absolutely um and I found out that the song was heavily inspired by uh, Weezer's Blue Album and the closing track on there. Because in both... Teal Album. No, the Blue Album, Come on, Zach. Zach. Uh, That's the one with the covers on What are you it, talking about? <laughs> Jesus Christ. On the Blue Album and on Guppy, uh, both of the album closers have like a notoriously different vibe than the entire rest of the album. What's the closer on the Blue Album? Oh God! Uh, um, I don't, um, only in dreams. Oh, I mean, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Hey, folks, it's me, your host Logan, checking in to say this is the most like technically plagued episode of this show we've ever had. <laughs> yeah, this I'm, episode like, is cursed. Oh my goodness! Dude. Every five minutes, I have to restart the recording. I I'm losing my mind over here. I don't know if that was evident. <laughs> <laughs> um. But we're trying our best, and I hope this is not the mood that we start this year of podcasting on, because right <laughs> now it's really <laughs> May the 31st. God oh, it can't it. be this bad on the first day of the it year. It simply can't. We have to do better. <laughs> I don't remember where we were. I think we were talking about... We were talking about Julia, but you just want to... Let's just get we're the Rebruski in. 
Oh boy. Let's just get the Rabrowski in. Oh man. I I hope we get like maybe 45 minutes of good content out of this. We'll be okay. No, no, no. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I I've ended up on the floor. Uh, my mic is at like I don't know, knee height, and I'm sitting on the ground talking into I can't it. even see Sarah's face um, anymore. I just see the hair on her legs. <laughs> <laughs> I I think, though, this is a good analogy for the year because we're soldiering on, we're persevering, we're doing what we have to do to get this out yeah. because there are people that depend on it for a little bit of levity in their day-to-day. Yeah. And we're not, we're not mus- music fans. We're not comedians. We're your saviors. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's just do the Robruski. Guys, last Let's just night. Let's do the fucking. Last night, Sarah made me drink like a plum cider. And I had one sip of it. And I told her I couldn't drink the whole thing, but it was New Year's Eve and she told me I had to. So I did. And it gave me acid reflux immediately. <laughs> oh, no. And so this. This entire morning, oh my goodness, it's 8.24 p.m. All day I've had acid reflux because of the (laughs) one sour drink I had last night. (laughs) Today, Sarah coerced me into drinking two of these dogfish head sea quenches. I used to drink these bad boys like water back in the day, and they would give me nightmarish acid reflux. And I can tell you, after two of those, I'm experiencing the same thing once again. (laughs) Dear listener, this is my warning to you. Don't have more than one of these if you can help it. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So let me pull oh, up our list of our brewskis. Oh, please. Oh, let's see here. We've got I... uh, most likely to have a copay in parentheses therapy joke. <laughs> uh, Sarah, do you have a follow up for that? Um, yeah. Uh, when you go to therapy, um, it goes through your, your insurance, but sometimes you have a copay, and there's a, there's a uh, song about therapy. So there's a copay. Okay. Therapy okay. joke. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Sorry, y'all. It happened again. We're so close. We're so close. We I'm, just have to finish this episode. <laughs> I'm livid. Zach, please help us get out of here. Fifty percent coupon for Joanne's Fabrics. Hello, that's funny. Best kids Bop five cover album. Hello, that's funny. Uh, most likely to be in that Jimmy Neutron scene where they blast off on a rocket from a roller coaster. My vote is for the roller coaster. I like that one too. Most most likely to be the uh, original soundtrack for the Jimmy Neutron movie. That's kind I, of a long one. I don't one. know if I can fit that on a certificate. Okay, no, that's fair enough. I'm just trying to talk fast so that we get what we need to get in before Pro Tools stops recording again. What about like, what about just like honorary Rabruski? Because we had so many computer problems and so many no, trials no, no, and no, tribulations. No, 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 They deserve this. They deserve this. They deserve okay, our we'll effort. Put, <sighs> if, if we're not going to pick it because it doesn't fit, I, then I vote for Best Kids Bot 5 cover band or my most likely to have a copay. I like most likely to have a copay. I like that copay. one as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. If the members of Charlie Bliss uh, at your leisure could come collect the award you've won the Rabruski for most likely to have a copay in parentheses therapy joke <laughs> yay I'm gonna cut the outro right quick uh, tell your friends about us it's 2021 and we're gonna be the best podcast ever thanks for listening I uh, well since Pro Tools is still going I will extend the outro just a little bit to let all of you know that we're very thankful that you joined us on this wacky wild ride over the last six months and there is plenty more as long as the gears of the world keep on turning. The gears of our podcast will keep on turning as well. And as long as my five-year-old laptop keeps running Pro Tools, we should be able to keep recording this podcast. <laughs> yeah, Thank Yay. you so much for listening. Um, if you want to find us on the internet, we are on Twitter and Instagram at Album or Brews. Um, we also made buttons. And if you want a button, uh, fucking DM us. We have buttons. They're free. We'll give them to you for free. They're really yeah, I'll, cute. I'll, I'll mail you a button. Yeah, we'll mail you a button and seal it with a kiss. Um, thanks for listening. There may or may not be like a dead bug in there too. 
go for flavor. Are you putting those I, in I on purpose, or are they just there. accidentally getting in there? I just That's can't a confirm He'll nor deny tell. that there will or will not be dead bugs in the envelope when you open it. Jesus Christ. Were they dead before or after you put them in the envelope? <laughs> Second word about you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. All right. God. Thank you for sticking with us on this one. Hopefully, in the coming weeks, we'll figure out how to record this podcast because it's been six months and we haven't sussed that <laughs> out yet. <laughs> but we're trying, and every day we get a little bit better. Uh, um. Anyway, this ends our uh, five weeks of a podcast every week, which we started out uh, very ambitiously and hopeful with a bright twinkle in our eyes. And now we're at the end of it and we have to go back to releasing this podcast every other week or we're going to lose our minds. <laughs> so uh, with that, I will say thank you one more time and we'll see you in two weeks. Bye. Goodbye.